There's over 20 hotels in Walt Disney World and I'm going to every single one today. Hey everybody, it's Molly with Mammoth Club and we are doing the ultimate day in resort hopping. There are over 20 resorts here at Walt Disney World and we are going to all of them today by car, by Skyliner, by monorail. We are gonna hit every single one from the over the top larger than life characters at your value resorts like the Art of Animation all the way up to the classiest spots at the Grand Floridian. We are checking them all off today. And at each one, I will be taking a selfie with something iconic at that resort. Maybe that's a signature treat you can only get at that resort. Maybe it's a piece of art. Maybe it's the pool. Maybe it's a nightmare chair. But along the way, I'm going to talk about all of Disney's resorts, the best things they have to offer, why you should stay at each one. It's going to be a long day. Let's get going. And we are starting the day at one of my favorites of all. This is Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. This is a deluxe resort, obviously near Animal Kingdom. And it's my favorite because there's literally drafts outside. Plus the food is amazing. And just walking into this lobby gives me all the feels. Oh, I just love it in here. I think this lobby is so stunningly beautiful. Part of the reason I love this resort so much is because of the collection of African art. They actually have the largest African art collection outside the continent of Africa here in Animal Kingdom Lodge. I I also love this resort because of the food. Jiko, the signature restaurant, is my favorite restaurant in all of Walt Disney World. You've got Boma, the buffet for breakfast and dinner. You've got amazing food at the lounge here at Victoria Falls. And well, considering we've got a long day ahead of us, we've got again like 21, 22 resorts to check out. You gotta fuel up for these kind of things. So I think Boma is the place to start. I've checked in at Boma and they said it would be a few minutes and they're going to text me when my table's ready. In the meantime, I'm going to go out and see if I can find some creatures because that's one of the best things about staying here as well is there's literally giraffes and zebras and antelope and flamingos and all kinds of wild animals. I see some giraffes off in the distance. After breakfast, I'll have to go out on the other outlook. That's what I love about this resort is there's these variety of outlooks like this, both here at Jumbo House. This is the main portion of the resort. There's also a DVC section of the resort, Disney Vacation Club. You'll hear me refer to that throughout the time today. That's Disney's timeshare program. The Disney Vacation Club section of Animal Kingdom Lodge is called Kadani Village. There's another restaurant at uh, Kadani Village. It's called Sanaa. It's also fabulous. There's more animal outlooks. Um, and while Disney Vacation Club is, yes, their timeshare program, anybody can stay in a DVC room. They tend to be suites all the way from family suites up to grand villas that can sleep 14 people depending on which resort you're at but like any other hotel room anyone can book it you don't have to be dvc to stay in one of those Ooh, i hear some flamingos oh look there they are hello good morning don't you guys look fancy today look at these jerk bird in there stealing the flamingos food got my text and i've been seated at boma i love this restaurant so much again it's a buffet for breakfast and dinner i used to say it was underrated but it seems like more and more people are hearing the good word of boma and they should because it's delicious gonna go to the buffet in a second but just waiting for my server to get my drink order uh, they do have a variety of cocktails wines uh, if you saw in the cheese video you know that they have a great wine list here around the resort lots of south african wines they do have some mo morning cocktails including a boozy um, iced coffee that comes with the zebra dome which i love and then they've got their full cocktail menu as well i'm good with that uh, I'm gonna stick to just the stuff that's included with the buffet. When you visit, you get anything you want, all you care to enjoy off the buffet. You also get your choice of non-alcoholic, non-specialty beverages, so juice, coffee, tea, soda, you can have as much of that as you'd like as well. Time to get some eats and treats, but fun fact, did you know Boma actually refers to the fence and the space within the fence? Uh, a Boma is something that in Africa they would make out of natural objects to b barricade yourself from predators in the wild. So when I actually went to Africa, we, the first thing we did was eat in a Boma and it kept us away from things like the hyenas, which literally came to eat with us and ate the bones from our meal. So very cool, very fun. Uh, but let's take a look at what you can get when you're at Boma. The first section over at the grill. This is one of their signature locations. You can get authentic African dishes such as boboti, as pap, um, as well as some carved meats. They have the Boma mustard for the ham. That's one of my favorites. They also have an oatmeal station with a variety of toppings. I'm not a plant-based eater, but that coconut oatmeal is fabulous and that is plant-based. Then you come to kind of your more traditional breakfast items, your different meats. They've got sausage, they've got bacon, they've got some tater tots and some plantains as well. This is also where you're going to be able to find your pancakes and your waffles. 
Then you've got eggs. They do scrambled eggs that are classic. They do uh, specialty scrambled eggs, and then they have little baby omelets. Next up, there's a little charcuterie station as well as some hard-boiled and deviled eggs. And then you get into your baked goods and sweets. So they've got classic things like bagels and toast and croissants with all kinds of toppings and spreads, jams, jellies, cream cheese, uh, Nutella. They also have cinnamon rolls, uh, a couple other baked goods like turnovers and muffins. And then they have some signature dishes, including their French toast bread pudding with a praline sauce or a vanilla sauce to go on it. Yay, yay, yay. Okay, I got my first plate off the buffet. Some of my favorites. I love Mickey waffles, but I love of Simba waffles even more, which they have here. Got one of those. Um, got some sausage. I was excited to try this watermelon. They have regular fruit, but then they also had watermelon with mint pistachio on it. Sounded delicious, so I got that. Some of the oat grilled asparagus off the wood fire there, um, as well as some carved ham with their signature boba mustard. And they have sambal now, which is a um, spicy uh, pepper sauce, so I added a little of that on there too. And then this is the reason I come to Boma for breakfast, y'all. They have the best scrambled eggs I've ever had in my entire life they rotate out which kind of egg they do um, but today they're doing a goat cheese and chive scrambled egg yum I don't have anything off a of grill like it just tastes better when it's off the grill they're doing it right there another of my fave dishes I didn't have room on my plate for is the baboti which is a traditional African dish um, made out of some kind of protein and eggs um, and it's kind of almost like a quiche they had that up there with turkey delicious but I went for some sausage, and you know I'm about to dip it in the syrup from the waffle. Boma, again, all you care to enjoy, you can go up and back and forth with the buffet as much as you want. It's $35 for adults, $21 for kids. The ideal time to eat at Boma, let me tell you this, is to go early to Animal Kingdom, get there early, it's the park that opens the earliest, rope drop, knock out flight of passage, get yourself a nice early morning safari, and then when it's time to luxuriate, take the bus over here to Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, enjoy a nice like late morning Boma, and then go back to the park. That's the ideal way to do it. Boma breakfast done, and I got my to-go coffee. That's one of my best pro tips when you are leaving a Disney sit-down restaurant. Ask for a to-go cup or whatever you've been drinking, and as long as it's something non-specialty, they'll give you a to-go with your meal so you can get a coffee, soda, juice, tea, whatever you were having. But now, let's go get our selfie outside. Well, looks like, unfortunately, the giraffes and the antelope and zebras and such are hiding. It's probably too cold for them. They're probably somewhere warmer. So I'm gonna take my selfie right here in the lobby instead, because this beautiful lobby with the overlook and the artwork, very quintessential animal can watch. Plus I've got my to-go coffee from MoMA. Perfect. One down, 20 to go. Sad to leave my favorite resort, but excited to check out the other literal dozens left. I just love it here so much. Love to stay here. I've stayed here twice maybe i would love to do a staycation here i've i've stayed here before for work events so i didn't really get to luxuriate in the hotel uh because i had a bunch of stuff and had to get up early and everything so whenever we do a staycation i'm gonna lobby for this as our place to be but for now it's back to my car and off to the next set of resorts i will point out that you often cannot park at especially deluxe resorts unless you have a confirmed dining reservation or spa reservation um, or you're staying there. So if you want to visit these resorts and you don't have those things, you will likely need to use Disney Transportation, which is why I recommended if you're at Animal Kingdom, taking the bus from Animal Kingdom over here. From one extreme to the other, we are now at the All-Star Resorts. Darting things off at All-Star Sports, these are Disney's least expensive resorts. Uh, these are part of their value resorts, and they have big over-the-top larger-than-life fixtures outside. These are also motel style, so your door is going to open up to the outside. However, they did remodel some of them recently to have family suites, and that is a pro in my opinion because you can fit more people in a room and it'll be even more budget friendly and while no one staying at the all starts is really staying here for the cuisine um none of them have full service restaurants they just all have like a cafeteria style market that's got kind of your standards chicken burgers pizzas they often have really cute desserts in the bakery cases so we're gonna stop at each bakery case um to see what they have like look at this look at that cute little pumpkin mickey adorable they also have this baseball one so, these cupcakes are often not my jam. Does it have popcorn on it? Oh 
my gosh, that's ridiculous. Um, they're often like too over the top and sweet for me, but they're really fun and kids love these desserts, plus they're really cute. The all-star resorts are all divided up into different sections based on that theme. And since we are at all-star sports, all of the sections feature America's favorite pastimes. I'm talking baseball, I'm talking football, I'm talking tennis, I'm talking basketball, and come on everyone, what's America's other favorite sport? Say it with me, surfing. Hee <laughs> hee! Like, should it not have been, I don't know, soccer? The most popular sport in the world? These resorts are great if you've got little ones. They tend to love the larger than life sections of the resorts. There's a lot of room to run around and play. However, one negative about these resorts I will say is they are often home to things like the cheerleading competitions. They're very loud. These resorts, often very crowded. So there's your downfall, but every resort has pros and cons. And if you're going on a budget, the All-Stars may be the perfect choice for you. I have personally stayed at all three of them uh, multiple times. Now, for my iconic thing, I'm in the football section, obviously. And you may notice that they've got these pennants along the top with different collegiate teams. And so I am looking for the Clemson Tiger pennant, because that's my alma mater. And I'm going to take a selfie with it. Blue Devils, that's Duke Bearcats. What is a Bearcat? Who is a Bearcat? If you're a Bearcat, let me know what and who you are. Okay, let's see. Gamecocks, ew. Crimson Tide. There you go, Alan. Okay, but where are the Tigers? There's Tigers, but wrong Tigers. That's LSU. Terrapins, is that like a turtle? Tar Heels, still don't know what that is. Boilermakers, who makes mascots up? But it's not Clemson's colors. Clemson is orange and purple, that's orange and black. So I'm gonna keep looking, unless they messed ours up. The Orange Men, I think that's Syracuse, and another Gamecocks, but still no Clemson Tigers. I've seen many other Tigers, there's orange and blue, there's orange and black, but where's orange and purple? You got another Crimson Tide, and you got Vols, that's Max's team. But where are the Clemson Tigers? Is this a joke at this point? There's a Tigers on the end that's purple and gold, a Tigers right here that's purple and gold, and a Tigers right here that's purple and gold. What is happening? I have walked around the entirety of both buildings and there is no Clemson Tigers. There are lots of Tigers, but they're the wrong colors. And I'm personally offended by this. So I guess I'll just take a selfie with this helmet. Ugh. Three, two. One. I guess the important thing is that we got our selfie in the football helmet and not that there's not a Clemson banner, although I'm going to be mad about that for a long time. But we're on to music and movies. Pops next door to our second all-star. This is all-star music. Similar vibe as all-star sports, but of course, instead of giant sports icons, you're gonna have different genres of music be your icon. In the lobby, you're gonna have famous musicians' photos, etc. Quick cupcake check. Okay, they have the same ones. They have the Boo Halloween, the Pumpkin Halloween, but then they also have this cute little one. It's got a guitar on it and bacon? Yeah, they're wild with the cupcakes here in the all-stars. The layout is basically the same at All Star Music, but your sections are themed to Calypso, Broadway, country, rock, and jazz music. Since they have neglected to put a boy band section here in All Star Music, I am going to take my selfie in the Broadway section because I'm manifesting, or should I say, mammifesting, a New York trip soon. Three, two, one. There is like no one around here. You could do a full production, basically. Whew. Okay, I gotta pick up the pace because we've been to three resorts and we have many more to go. Off to the last All Star. Hello! 
Made it to our third and final all-star. This is all-star movie. So again, same gist, except for the theme is movie. So along the walls you hear you have scenes from famous films. And of course, our man Walt Disney right there. And the five themes here throughout the resort. You've got Fantasia, Herbie the Love Bug, Toy Story, 101 Dalmatians, and the Mighty Ducks. Gonna do our cupcake check-in here and hubba hubba. All-star movies cupcake check. They have the same seasonal ones, but then look. They've got one that's got caramel corn on top of it. Very cute. That one is cute, but I'm a little disappointed because they used to have like a cupcake featuring one of the movies here. So they had a super cute Fantasia one one time. They had a super cute Herbie the Love Bug one. So I was kind of hoping they had a Toy Story themed cupcake, but very fun. And now I'm sure you know which section I'm going to for my selfie. Especially if you're not planning on spending a ton of time at the resort, maybe you're on a short trip um, or you're just not a resort day kind of person, these resorts are perfect because you still get the perks of the transportation to the parks, you still get the perk of that early theme park access, you still are going to get the pools and a couple touches of Disney magic throughout the resort, but you're paying a much more reasonable price than some of the deluxe resorts are even less expensive than pop and art of animation the other values i just think this section in particular is so fun i adore it plus they redid the rooms recently at these resorts so and they're still working on some of them i uh, saw them working over at sports so this is not a bad option if you're balling on a budget three two one Phew, good thing I was allowed in. I almost thought I broke the rules for a second. And just as a note, when you're doing your online check-in for Disney Resorts, you can put in requests such as bottom floor, top floor, close to the stairs, close to the lobby, what have you. So if there's a section you'd like to stay in in one of the All-Stars, you could request that there and hopefully they can accommodate. No guarantees, but it's always nice to put in. Ugh, I also think the Dalmatian section is so cute, but that wraps up our time at the All-Stars. We're gonna have to pick up the pace. And we are off to our next resort. Headed into resort number five. This is Coronado Springs. Coronado Springs is a moderate resort. It's also a business resort. So you're gonna see that they have a large convention center here. And a lot of this resort's purpose is for big conventions. It underwent a massive refurbishment and addition just a few years ago. So it's become one of my favorite resorts. I think it is probably the best in the moderate category because the dining here is incredible. A lot of the tech has been updated in the rooms and it's just a very beautiful and I think underrated resort particularly where we're headed next, which is the Grand Casino Tower. One of the additions is out on that island right there. It's called Three Bridges Bar and Grill, and it is a fabulous restaurant. They do sangria flights. They do um, the street corn dip. That's amazing. Very delicious. Over across the way there, you've also got the pool. It's one of the most kind of iconic, fun-looking pools, the Hawaiian Pyramid Pool here at Coronado Springs. But we are headed to Grand Destino Tower, which was that new addition I was talking about. It is absolutely gorgeous, and it's one of my top recommendations if you are a honeymoon couple, and anniversary couple, a couple with older kids, because um, it, it's not super over the top Disney. It definitely feels a little bit more luxurious than that. It feels a little bit more adult and elevated than that. So if you are looking for something, especially on a good price point that feels a little bit more grown up, Grand Casino Tower is fabulous. Additionally, because of the business aspect of this resort, it's the only moderate to have gym facilities which if you're the kind of person that works out on vacation, there you go, good for you. The one thing I don't love about Coronado Springs in general is how big it is. And because of that, the bus transportation isn't my favorite. You're gonna see this issue at some other resorts we'll talk about as well. But because it's so big, the bus has to do an internal bus loop before it can head out to the parks, which means you could be spending a long time waiting for the bus. The bus could be full by the time it gets to you, or you could get on the bus and then have to do a whole lap around your hotel before you even leave and head out to the parks. And it just takes a long time. I also wish there was another kind of transportation here. It's only bus transportation as far as Disney transportation goes. There's no boat, there's no Skyline, there's no monorail or anything. But besides that, look at this place. Is this not fabulous? It is just fabulous in here. The Grand Destino Tower is modeled after Spain and primarily Spanish artist Salvador Dali, who Walt Disney actually knew and had a friendship with. They did a cartoon together that's very unknown. Not a lot of people have heard about this uh, collaboration, but it was called Destino, which is where Grand Destino Tower gets its name. 
And so because of that Spanish influence, you see a lot of that in the architecture throughout the resort. You're going to see a lot of that in the menu. Right here, you've got the Barcelona Lounge, which serves breakfast and coffee until noon, and then it opens back up as tapas and cocktails. The signature drink of the Grand Casino Tower is a gin tonic, uh, so they have a variety of those as well as a house custom one that's served around. They have a rooftop restaurant called Toledo, which is tapas, seafood, steaks, amazing, very underrated restaurant in my opinion. This is a really, really great resort. Again, a especially if you are looking for a little luxury, but on more of a budget. But what we are going to take a selfie with today because of the Walt Disney Salvador Dali influence, I absolutely love this picture, this portrait right here of Walt and Mickey. This is about the most Disney thing you see in this entire tower, and I think it's really beautiful, and I just think uh, it's the perfect thing for our selfie. Headed back to my car to keep on moving. I wish I had come to Coronado during a time when I could have had something to eat or drink because I'm telling you the food is so good here now. Um, but that just means we have to come back because we got to keep on keeping on. We've only done five resorts. We're less than a quarter of the way through. We G to G. Coronado Springs wrapped up the Animal Kingdom area resorts, so now we are onto the Disney Springs area, starting with another of my favorite moderates, Port Orleans French Quarter. And I bet you know what I'm getting here. Shocking to no one, we are headed into Scat Cats Club Cafe. This is where you can get the famous Mickey beignets. This is the only place in Walt Disney World you can get them. I'm obsessed with them. They're one of my favorite Disney foods and obviously what we have to take a selfie with here. This cafe is where you can get beignets, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, as well as some coffee and other beverages. Right next door is the Scat Cats Club. They're open in the evenings for cocktails. They've got some great appetizers. I went there in the cheese throwdown video. If you want to check that one out for some pimento cheese fritters, great underrated place for some nightlife. I just love the vibe at this resort. It's very laid back. It's actually the smallest Disney resort, but it's got really pretty pastel colors. The resort itself is themed to New Orleans and Mardi Gras, so they're playing jazz music as you walk around, and they've got Mardi Gras beads out at the pool, and it's just like, it's just pretty and quaint and pleasant to be here. Got my little beignets. I'm so excited. Ooh, yay! And actually, y'all, while I'm here, you gotta shake them up so the powdered sugar gets everywhere. While I'm here, they actually still have the pumpkin spice ones, the seasonal flavor, because they rotate seasonal flavors, so I had to get those, but yum. They smell amazing. They're piping hot, like it was burning my hand taking a video of it, but I'm so excited. These are not as like messy looking as the classics, but I'm very excited to try pumpkin spice. If there's anything better, then some sweet tunes and a Mickey beignet on a beautiful 60 degree day. I don't know what it is. They're so doughy. They're hot and fresh. They're made right here. They're per they're always perfect. They're light and they're obviously sweet because they're a dessert breakfast, I guess. Um, but they're not like artificially flavored sweet. Normally they have the powdered sugar. Um, so you get the powdered sugar everywhere. This one's again the pumpkin spice seasonal right now. So it does have that hint of pumpkin spice, nutmeg, cinnamon, cloves, autumnal flavor. So if you like pumpkin spice, give them a whirl. I tried to mix and match because it comes in a set of three, but they said I had to either get all classic or all pumpkin. If you've never had them before, go classic. One of my favorite snacks in all of Disney World. Worth a trip to Port Orleans just to get them, honestly. Now I'm headed to the back of the resort, past the pool, so that I can get on the boat to head over to the sister resort, Port Orleans Riverside. You can walk, but I like a leisurely boat ride on a nice day, don't you? Hoping this boat right here will take me. One of the perks of staying at Port Orleans, both sides, French Quarter and Riverside, is that there is transportation between the two and Disney Springs. So if you are headed to Disney Springs for a dinner, drinks, entertainment, you can take a boat. Made it over to Riverside. Again, this is the sister resort here at Port Orleans. Riverside is a little bit bigger. It's where you've got boat rights, the sit-down restaurant. You've got another quick service dining location, the Riverside Mill. You've got another pool. You've got some other activities that you can do here. You can rent boats. They've got Surrey bikes, regular bikes. Uh, they do carriage rides. So you've got a little bit more going on here in Riverside. But what's nice is if you stay in one, you have pretty easy access to the other and you can use the amenities at both. And I have just the ticket for a fun activity here in Riverside. I hope they're doing it today. It's a sad day, friends. I wanted to go pole fishing at the fishing hole for my Riverside thing. And I was gonna take a selfie with a fish I caught or 
um, to not be like every guy on dating apps, I was just going to take it with while fishing maybe. But unfortunately the fishing pole closed at 145. The last pole's out at 115. It was only a little over $6 for half an hour. Um, and I really thought it'd be a fun little activity. I actually did scour the app and the website to figure out what time fishing was available and I couldn't find it. So it would be one of those things if you wanted to do fishing while you're staying here, uh, I think the front desk would have that information. But since I wasn't staying here, I obviously didn't have access to the front desk. So sad for me and my fishing dreams. Um, but nevertheless, we'll go take a selfie with the mill, which is the most iconic thing to look at here. And we go on. Unlike illuminations. Got him. Selfie with the mill, check. I see a boat pulling up. I'm gonna scurry over that way because I hope that one's going back to French Quarter where my car is. Um, also, Snow White and the Prince are here. That is random, but hello. They look very lovely. They have nothing to do with Port Orleans. This is a Southern themed resort. They're German, but okay. We love to see it. Crossing off both Port Orleans spots means we're officially one third of the way through our list, which means we got a lot more resort goodness to get through. Let's get to it. This is the OG Disney Vacation Club Resort and a resort I find to be pretty underrated. You get some very good perks for staying here at a much lower cost than the other resorts that you get the same perks at. What I mean by that is because this is a Disney Vacation Club Resort, which again, anybody can stay at, but they are gonna have uh, the suite style rooms from one bedroom all the way up to three bedroom villas. You're gonna get more of a little bit homey feel if you stay in one of these rooms, meaning they're gonna have some kind of kitchen or kitchenette. They may have in-room laundry. So it's good for bigger families or people staying a longer time and want some of those services. I never realized how helpful in-room laundry would be until I stayed with my family with small children and apparently kids do a lot of laundry well they don't do it their parents do but they need a lot of laundry done so if you stay in a DVC suite um, having that in-room washer dryer in some of those rooms is a great perk but because Old Key West is a DVC resort it gets included into the perk of the extended hours at the theme parks that are reserved for exclusively DVC villa and deluxe resorts as far as price point goes, as far as amenities go, I consider Old Key West more on level with a moderate resort. Old Key West is known for a couple of things. First of all, Olivia's right here. This is their full service restaurant. It's a very good, very underrated spot. You're gonna get some uh, kind of Southern style home cooking. You've also got the Gurgling Suitcase, which is their pool bar, which is great. Now the downfall of Old Key West, in my opinion, is similar to the downfall of Coronado Springs in that it's huge. It's very big, very spread out, which means when you are taking those and buses to go to the theme park you're gonna have to ride that internal bus loop first but old key west just like port orleans does have a boat over to disney springs which is a nice perk for our selfie here at old key west i'm gonna take a picture with this flagpole one because it's nautical and themed well it's on brand for old key west but two these are nautical flags so they have a meaning depending on which way you read it it says members welcome home or if you're coming on the boat this way it would read welcome home members because this is the original dvc sea resort so it all tracks it all makes sense very fun little detail there and we're going to set up the camera to take a selfie What I love about Old Key West too is the story. Basically, when you come visit, you are in Key West, but you are in a town called Conk Flats. And so the whole thing is themed to this Conk Flats idea. So like, this is the Conk Flats general store. You've got the mailbox. You'll see things addressed to Conk Flats. There's tons of detail. It's very fun. And actually, sometimes they do a tour, a free tour for guests staying at the resort. Uh, you can inquire about that with the front desk and they'll point out some more of that Imagineering storytelling, which you know I love. And I, I assume some of you do too if you're uh, watching this channel so we are headed out though short and sweet trip to Old Key West and now we are headed not too far away to finish the Disney Springs area welcome to Saratoga Springs this is a resort nestled on the shore of the Lake Buena Vista golf course one of Disney's several golf courses on property and so I have parked on the back of Saratoga Springs near the pro shop, which anyone's welcome to come visit. A uh, little known little spot that maybe if you've got someone in your family that loves golf, 
you could come check out the pro shop for a gift or of course somebody could come play some holes I've never played golf before that's probably not surprising to anyone also at Saratoga Springs right here on the golf course you've got the turf club which is a sit-down restaurant uh, very easy to get a reservation there last time I ate there was delicious so a little underrated maybe time to go back Saratoga Springs is also a Disney Vacation Club Villa Resort. It's a deluxe level one. It has boat access to Disney Springs. Besides that, bus access everywhere else. And once again, the dreaded internal bus loop. This is probably my least favorite Disney Resort. I'm really sorry to say that, but somebody has to be it. There's just nothing amazing about it, I would say. It's far away from most things. There's not great transportation options, and you have that internal bus loop. But if you are a golfer, it may be your favorite resort. So that's cool too. Okay, so what I was looking for is there's one really cool Mickey Mouse golf cart where like his face is the golf cart. Unfortunately, it's not here. It's at the other golf course the guy just told me. I do like this one though that says the happiest place on turf. I would like it more if it was making a joke about the actual tagline for Walt Disney World because Disneyland is the happiest place on earth. Disney World is the most magical place on earth. But nonetheless, very funny pun. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. The gas member comes out of the pro shop and he's like, ma'am, you look lost. Can I help you? I'm like, duh. And I'm like, yeah, do you have the Mickey golf cart? And he explains it. No, it's at the other one. Um, but we do have a Mickey shaped bunker. And I said, what's a bunker? And he was like, like a sand trap. And I said, oh, I know what that is. Can I go over there or I'll get hit by a golf ball? <laughs> he's like, no, no, no. No one hits that hard that far because it's like on the back end of the ninth hole so you'll be good and i'm like yeah i know what those words mean back end ninth hole totally totes my goats anyway um we're gonna go take a picture with the mickey sand trap i'm like 98 percent sure i'm not supposed to walk on the grass in regular shoes i think that's a golf thing so i'm not gonna go on the grass but i do see the very cute mickey sand trap this is a fun one it also says quiet please because people are golfing and I would not like to ruin their day with my loud speaking. So we're just gonna take a selfie real quick with the sand trap and get out of here. Okay, that was a really fun one. I truly wasn't sure what I was gonna take a picture of at Saratoga Springs. I thought about taking a picture of the horse statue that's outside the main lobby because the theme of the whole resort is Saratoga Springs and horse racing. But then when I thought the Mickey golf cart, I thought that was better. And the sand trap was very fun too. So thank you to the kind cast member of the pro shop. And now we are off on our next adventure, which if you are sad, you didn't see a horse statue, just you wait. See, I promised you horses and there's horses. Yeehaw, everybody. We have made it to Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground. This is where you can rent a cabin, which I love doing. We've done that with our friends several times. You can park a camper, you can pitch a tent. And we are headed up to the settlement, which is the main area for maybe my favorite thing on the list so far. If you thought we're doing hoop de doo you're wrong. We're not doing hoop de doo We don't have time for hoop de doo today. We, we're not even in double digits yet. Whew, baby, there's a lot of resorts here. Uh, but we are going to a very underrated place, I'd say. A little known place to see a very little known piece of Disney history. And maybe some horsies, too. Tri-Circle D Ranch got a makeover a little bit ago at this point, but it is so beautiful. It's where plenty of the Disney horses live. Think of the horses that pull the carriages on Main Street or do the carriage rides. They also do trail rides, pony rides. Look at that beautiful horsey getting a bath. Oh my gosh. Um, I grew up riding horses. I had two horses I showed for a very long time, so I love horses and I'm really excited about this. <gasps> Look, another beautiful one. Oh, boy. anyone can come visit the barn during their opera. Hello, beautiful. Aren't you so handsome? Hi. Oh my gosh. Oh, so handsome. Anyone can come visit when they're open and I just love it. He's getting tacked up. I bet he's gonna do carriage rides. Yeah, I bet he is. Look how beautiful. I love him. Oh look, I just learned that that horse was Zilly. And look, here's his stall. He's a Percheron, which is a draft horse. They said he's over 18 hands tall, which is really tall for a horse. To measure a horse's height, it's from the bottom of their hooves up to their withers, which is that like 
their shoulder bone basically is what it looks like he's got a harness on there right there i did confirm he's about to do some carriage rides and a hand it's an old-fashioned measurement that people would use like back in the olden days um, but it's four inches and it's because the average hand if you go like this is four inches up and down so it'd be like one two three four blah 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 so that's how what a hand is when someone says a horse is x hands tall so over 18 is a lot the cast member also told me that zilly they tried to have him be one of the headless horseman horses but he didn't like it he did not like being ridden so now he's a happy as a clam being a carriage horse or a parade horse um, and pulling things look at this one who's this hi phil Phil's having dinner. Oh my gosh, Phil, I love you. Oh, I could do this all day. You're not supposed to pet the horses, which I'm gonna respect the rules because obviously they don't want any accidents to happen. But oh my gosh, it's very hard for me to control myself. Red, he's a Belgian draft horse. Hi, Red. You're so beautiful. Hi, Grady. Oh my gosh, look at the little pony. Hi. Are you gonna do a pony ride? Aren't you so cute? Look at this beautiful horse giving a bath. I wonder if I can learn about them and what their name is. I don't wanna be too loud. I have learned that this horse is named Chief and that he is sometimes a trolley horse on Main Street. He's in the parades. When they had the cavalcades with Gaston riding the horse, it might've been him. But tonight, Chief has a very important job. He's gonna be the headless horseman's horse. That's why he's getting a bath, so he looks all beautiful to head down Main Street. Yes, you know you're handsome, don't you? Sweet boy. Okay, I wanted to take my selfie with this historical thing inside, but I'm gonna take a bonus selfie with Chief because he's so cute. We literally have so many more resorts, but I could be in this barn all day watching horses. But let's go look at this historical thing so we can keep on keeping on. This is really cool too because it says wedding harness room. So if you've ever seen all the little white uh, Shetland ponies pull Cinderella carriage, that's what they're using. There's their little harnesses. They do it in the Christmas parade as well. And then you've got some of the big boy harnesses over here. But at long last, this is what I've been talking about and hinting towards. This is the Dragon Calliope. This is an instrument that Walt Disney himself purchased and it was used in Disneyland in the 50s for the Mickey Mouse Club Circus Parade. It was also in uh, a couple of Disney films. But is this not so cool that this is here? This is actually pulled through Disneyland by Disney horses. Walt Disney himself picked it out it was first used around 1907 in england it's just a very cool and very niche unique piece of disney history and it's right here at tricycle d ranch so let's get our selfie with it silly you have more outfit on you've got some very fashionable reflectors very good safety first I don't know if visiting Tricircle D Ranch is a must do for most people, especially if you're on like a short trip, it's kind of out of your way to come all the way up to the settlement at Fort Wilderness. But if you're maybe coming to Hoop de Doo or something and you want to come over beforehand, keep in mind it does typically close at five. Or if you're coming on a longer trip and you like horses, you may want to come check it out. Or perhaps you want to do one of the horse-based activities they have here. Again, they do carriage rides, they do pony rides for little ones, trail rides. I've always wanted to do the trail rides. I've never done a trail ride through Walt Disney World. Maybe we should do that. Let us know if you think that would be interesting. But Fort Wilderness, check it off the list. But we got to get out of here. We have so many more things to do. We haven't even touched Skyliner or Monorail Resorts. Just parked at another one of my favorites. This is the Wilderness Lodge Resort. This is another deluxe resort, technically in the Magic Kingdom area, just like Fort Wilderness, but no monorail transportation. You can take a boat from both here and Fort Wilderness over to Magic Kingdom. And I'm hurrying because the thing I would like to take a picture with happens in like five minutes and I have to get all the way there so we can get our selfie with it. Otherwise, I'd have to find something else or wait another hour. We don't have another hour. Here we go. This is why I love this resort so much. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Boom. Oh, is this not gorgeous? As you can probably tell by the gorgeous totem poles and the buffalo and the cowboys and all the woodwork, this resort is inspired by the Pacific Northwest. It is absolutely stunning. Again, it's one of my favorites. This lobby is just... Oh, breathtaking when you come in here. I absolutely love it. 
Okay, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> One of the coolest things about this resort is the water right here in the lobby. You've got a little bit of a bubbling fountain here, a little bit of a geyser spoiler for what we're about to go see. And that water flows all the way down through the resort, down a big waterfall and out to where we're headed. Three minutes, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. One minute, one minute, just a few seconds, just a few seconds. I think it's starting, oh my gosh. We're making it, we made it. Phew. Okay, here we go. Come on, little buddy. You can do it. You're trying so hard. Come on. Well, that was anticlimactic because the geyser is supposed to shoot off on the top of the hour from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and I got here right at five o'clock and it's just been kind of spitting and trying its best, but no, no geyser. I wonder if it's because there's construction at the resort or what's going on. But I'll just take a I'll just take a selfie with the rock, I guess. No, I'll go take the selfie with the waterfall. How about that? The Wilderness Lodge has some great dining as well. Geyser Point Bar and Grills, a fabulous lounge uh, there on the water side. You can watch the electrical water pageant go right past you. Wilderness Lodge is also home to Whispering Canyon Cafe, which is that rowdy, um, all you care to enjoy skillet at the restaurant but it's that one where like if you ask for ketchup they bring you every bottle of ketchup in the restaurant and this is also where you can go to artist point artist point used to be a signature restaurant but it is now a character dining experience with snow white the evil queen grumpy and uh dopey usually very fun character dining experience if you've got kids that enjoy that story actually as beautiful as this waterfall is i just thought of something even better it's even cuter to take a picture with, but we gotta go back into the lobby. Right outside Wilderness Lodge Mercantile, you can find this totem pole with Mickey, Goofy, Donald, and Humphrey the Bear, and it's so cute. And we're gonna take our picture with that. <laughs> Selfie complete, and while I am sad to leave this beautiful resort and not go sit at Geyser Point with a delicious cocktail and bison burger, we have literally the entire Skyliner route and the entire monorail route left. So we gotta get going on there. I think I'm gonna go over Skyliner route first. I know I'm in the Magic Kingdom area right now, but I think it'd be nice to end at the Polynesian Contemporary and Grand. Those are some of the OG Disney resorts. They're kind of where I wanna eat. So we're gonna go over to the Skyliner. Well, I parked at Hollywood Studios because you're usually unable to park at Skyliner resorts without being a guest there or having a dining reservation there. And I was gonna take the Skyliner to the main hub at Caribbean Beach and then do the pop and art of animation and then bop, bop, bop through the Skyliner resorts. But it looks like this leg isn't working right now. Unfortunately, the line of the Skyliner that goes between Hollywood Studios and Caribbean Beach, which is the Skyliner hub, is down right now and they don't have an ETA. So they directed me to either the boat, which does Yacht Beach Boardwalk area, or they're running recovery buses to uh, Pop Century and Art of Animation. So I'm gonna take the boat and kind of do the Skyliner resorts backwards. Now's a good time to point out that we're only doing Disney owned and operated resorts today. So no Swan and Dolphin, cause that's owned and operated by Marriott. No Four Seasons, no Shades of Green. Uh, none of the Good Neighbor Hotels on Hotel Plaza Boulevard by Disney Springs. We're already going to 21 resorts today, so just the Disney ones, in case anybody's like, but where, what about the swan? That's what about the swan. Also, tragedy has struck. I just realized I forgot my ears in my car. Oh, it's so far away. So the option is either don't wear ears the rest of this video or buy a pair at one of the resorts I'm about to go to. But I should be responsible, right? Gotta say, not real mad about having to ride the boat on such a beautiful evening. It's stunning out here. This area of property is so gorgeous. The friendship boats connect Hollywood Studios and Epcot and all of the resorts that fit along that waterway. So you've got the Yacht and the Beach Club, you've got the Boardwalk Inn, and then again, you've got Swan and Dolphin, which we're not including in this video. But that's a great perk about staying at any of these resorts is that you have that boat transportation to either of those parks. You can also walk to either of those parks from any of the hotels I just listed, as well as take the Skyliner. So lots of options. That's why these are some of the most popular places to stay in Disney. World. 
It's also why they're some of the most expensive places to stay in Disney World. With the exception being Swan and Dolphin, because it's Marriott owned and operated, you can often get a really good deal. You get all the same perks as any other Disney Deluxe Resort, including those extended hours, but you can often do it for a fraction of the cost. So, little pro tip there. Not as Disney, not as themed, but very nice resorts if that's what you're looking for. I popped into the Yacht Club first. Yacht and Beach Club are sister resorts, so much like Port Orleans, if you get the benefits of one, you get the benefits of both. So they have a lot of shared perks, including a lot of dining, lounges, and the best pool on property. I'm going to save the selfie with the pirate ship at the pool for Beach Club selfie because of this gigantic globe that's here in the Yacht Club lobby. This is kind of an iconic fixture. If you're a Disney fan or a Yacht and Beach Club fan, you probably know about this globe or associate this globe with the Yacht and Beach Club, so it felt appropriate to be the Yacht Club's photo of the day. Perfect. Now let's scoot over to Beach Club. Also, by looking at the selfie, you may have noticed I did not buy new ears. That's not because I'm being responsible at all. It's because I went to the market here at the Yacht Club and I um, own all the ones they have, so we'll look again at the Beach Club. Talking again about those shared amenities. Talking again about those shared amenities, the dining at Yacht and Beach is a lot of people's favorite. You've got the Yachtsman Steakhouse, which is here at the Yacht Club. It's a signature steakhouse, as the name would suggest. You've got Ale and Compass also over here on this side, a much more underrated but very delicious table service restaurant. They do a great breakfast situation. It'd be really nice for an Epcot day to start there with breakfast. You've also got Beaches and Cream, a very beloved uh, kind of diner style known for their over-the-top milkshakes restaurant. And you also have Cape May Cafe over at the Beach Club side, which is character dining in the morning and then an all-you-care-to-enjoy seafood buffet at night. Made it over to the Beach Club. As you can see, very similar in decor and style as the Yacht Club. It's a little bit brighter in here, a little bit lighter. So which one you prefer is kind of personal preference. So staying at the Beach Club is kind of the closest you could get to sleeping uh, at International Gateway if you are trying to get in for the festivals. I know that's why a lot of people love staying here during festival time. It's really easy to be able to just walk um, to Epcot, enjoy a festival for a little bit, and then we'll just scoot right back to your hotel. And here she is. This is the pirate ship water slide for Stormalong Bay, which is the joint pool for Yacht and Beach Club. It's got this amazing water slide that starts right here, crosses over the little street, and ends up in the pool. There's a lazy river. It's a sand bottom pool. A very, very cool uh, perk of staying at Yacht Beach is being able to use this facility. And so if you do choose to stay here, I definitely recommend a pool day to have fun in Stormalong Bay. Based on the pirate ship selfie, you may have noticed I still don't have ears on. Alas, the Beach Club Marketplace had a couple pairs I didn't own yet, but I don't love them. And despite, you know, what it probably appears like, I don't actually buy every pair that comes out. I have certain colors and patterns and things I like, and these just didn't fit the bill. So we are still earless, which is probably fine. I do sometimes prefer to go earless when I'm going to eat at signature dining locations and at the deluxe resorts, which should give you a hint of some of the other places we're going. But for now, I'm starting the jaunt over to the boardwalk where a nightmare awaits. Headed into the lobby at the boardwalk for our photo, I'm telling you to brace yourself because it's very scary. But the boardwalk is another deluxe resort. It features several nighttime locations out here on the 20s inspired boardwalk. Things like Abracadab Bar, which is a magician's themed bar, Jelly Rolls, which is a dueling piano bar, Atlantic Dance Hall, Flying Fish, a signature seafood restaurant, etc. So this is a great resort to stay at if you are looking for a little bit more nightlife, a little more after the park, fun after dark. It's also, again, walking distance to Epcot, making it another fan fave. Made it into the lobby, which is where our selfie spot is going to be. There's a few cool things to point out. There's this model of an old school wooden roller coaster. There's a model of Lucy the Elephant, which was an actual hotel on the boardwalk up in Atlantic City. Uh, and then you have this nightmare here in the form of a chair. Um, hello? What are you doing in the nanny chair? Oh, well, you know, sharing your nightmares. It, it's gonna take your soul, I think. Oh, too late. 
All right, well, I'll leave you to that, and I'm going to take a selfie with this one and then continue on my day. Oh, can I come? Okay. Okay. Say hello to the nanny chairs. They are a traditional chair from back in the day, and they're called nanny chairs because they were made for nannies to sit in while the children did rides and, th and things at a boardwalk and like went on the merry-go-round and stuff. So um, they're terrifying, but they're actually, if you want to take it one step further with the tear, they all have names. What? They all have names. If you look at the back of them, this one's name is Kylie. What's that one's name? Carrie and Kylie. Wow. Okay, now we have to take a selfie sitting in the nanny chairs. You're part of the selfies now. Okay. All right, let's get out of here before we become demons. Mm -hmm. Did you see their little feet? Oh no. <laughs> no. I hate it. No. Crescent Lake Resort's done. That's this body of water right here. And now it's to the Skyliner to complete the lap, kind of in reverse plan that I originally had, but that's fine. We are walking to the back entrance of Epcot right here at International Gateway. This puts you into the park right between the United Kingdom and France pavilions in World Showcase. Epcot, fun fact, only Walt Disney World Park to have two entrances. And again, this is why people want to stay at Yacht Beach Boardwalk, because you can just boop right in there, ride Remy right away, and then start eating. Really? That's all we want to do anyway. Ride Remy, smell the bread, get off the attraction, eat some bread. It's it's like they make you. It's impossible not to eat bread afterwards. What manipulation? Genius. The Skyliner starts here at International Gateway. It connects at Riviera, which is our next stop. Then it keeps going to the Caribbean Beach hub for the Skyliner. From there, you can get on a separate line over to Hollywood Studios, or another line, the third line, over to Pop Century and Art of Animation. We have seven resorts left, which means we are officially two thirds of the way through, and we have some really, really good ones left. Made it to Riviera Resort. This is another Disney Vacation Club resort, which has first ever studio suites as well. They're very, very small rooms, but they go from those all the way up to a grand villa that can sleep 14 guests. Riviera is on the deluxe price point. Um, it's, it is very expensive. It's one of the more expensive resorts, but it's also, I'm not gonna lie to you, one of my favorites. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It was inspired by Walt's travels to Italy and France and the Riviera. The food is amazing. Uh, it's got some of the best food on property, in my opinion. Topolino's Terrace is a signature restaurant that does a wonderful character breakfast and an amazing signature dinner. You've got Bar Riva, probably the best pool bar on property as far as food goes. You've also got uh, Primo Piazza, the quick service restaurant. It's just wonderful. It's just amazing. It's definitely another one that's a little bit more adult in feel. There's not a ton of over-the-top Disney things, but there are some really magical touches, like these incredible mosaics in the Skyliner archway of Tangled and Peter Pan. Is this live music? Oh my gosh. The vibes. Immaculate. I love this resort. We are headed to a special elevator, the only one that takes you all the way up to the 10th floor, to Topolino's Terrace, Flavors of the Riviera. Again, it's a character meal at breakfast, very, very popular, probably the hardest breakfast reservation to get these days. And at dinner, it's a signature French and Italian restaurant. You can do reservations, you can do the walk away list, or they do have a lounge that's first come, first serve, so we're hoping there's some room for us. This whole section on the white tile is first come, first serve, lounge seating. Uh, they do serve the full menu, so we're gonna be able to get a couple of munchies and a cocktail and have that out on the patio. Taking a look at the Topolino's menu, they have a bunch of signature cocktails. Of course, they have a fabulous wine list featuring both French and Italian wines. As far as their eats go, they have a variety of delicious antipasti. Uh, the duck confit gnocchi is fabulous. The ricotta is amazing. They have some delicious soups. 
their pastas. Everything's made in-house from the noodles. They import a lot of the cheeses and the olive oils from France and Italy. That rigatoni um, with the chicken is one of my favorite dishes on property. They, of course, have a delightful spread of seafoods and meats. Um, they have a veal. They have a filet. They have sea scallops. It really is a lovely experience, especially if you're a foodie and you like cheese and carbs. This is a good place to come. And, of course... It wouldn't be Topolino's Terrace without the terrace, which you are able to bring your cocktails out on. So we are going to go out here, and that will be our selfie for Riviera. All the way up here, it's an absolutely gorgeous view. You can see Riviera, of course. You can look past and see Epcot. You can see the Swan Dolphin area. You can see Tower of Terror. It's obviously hard. It's nighttime right now. And during the daytime, you can actually, if you look hard enough, see Animal Kingdom and Blizzard Beach. But what's amazing about the terrace, besides the fact that it's just beautiful to be out here anyway, is there's actually a pretty decent view of Harmonious. And they pump the music out here, and it's lovely. Now, it's not as iconic or a signature as watching fireworks from California Grill over at Magic Kingdom, but it is still a really nice experience. Came back inside and our appetizers here. Obviously, we had to get some cheese while we're here. So this is their house-made ricotta. It comes with tomato jam, a little bit of a basil aioli, and then it comes with their epi bread, which they also brought us more of, as well as some imported olive oil. This is the signature bread that you get when you dine here. It is designed to look like wheat. So it's very beautiful. Pull apart bread, and it's delightful. While Molly got herself some Prosecco, I got myself the modern fashion, which is the Riviera has taken an old fashioned. It is a rye whiskey, a little bit of rum, and some vanilla simple syrup that's house made, as well as some bitters. You can taste the spice of the rye whiskey very, very uh, overtly, as well as tempered by the sweet sugar of the rum. Just delightful. A really, really elegant taste, honestly. Love to just go in there. Get a little bit of the cheese, the tomato jam. Maybe I should do a cheese video part two. Um, but this ricotta is so good. It's creamy and delicious now, but I think the star is actually the tomato jam. It is ripe and a little bit sweet, that natural sweetness. You're also are getting a little bit of herbiness from that basil aioli. It's just a really well-balanced dish. Very simple, very elegant, very, very wonderful. Have you had this before? No. What do you think? Um, I think it's delicious. The unsung hero about this is the acidity of the jam plays with the really creamy freshness of the ricotta. It's as I've said before, I love eating at lounges at restaurants. That way you can eat as much as possible. And this is, again, a really popular restaurant. So the fact that you can come in uh, and most of the time be able to grab a seat without a wait and just order whatever you'd like. Personally, splitting one or two appetizers and then getting the pasta dish to split as well, a perfect meal in my opinion. Riviera, check. Headed back to the Skyliner so we can take a very short flight over to Caribbean Beach. And then it will be on to Pop Century and Art of Animation. And then, the monorail resorts. You got this. So far, it's been 12 hours. Hey, hey. This is the longest challenge I think I've ever done. <laughs> Made it to Caribbean Beach, and I'm not gonna lie to you. I mold this one over quite a bit because Caribbean Beach is fine. It's honestly tied with Saratoga for my personal least favorite resort, Disney World, for some of the same reasons. It's absolutely massive. It takes forever to get around here. So you've got the Skyliner Station, but it's a pretty long walk to some of the different neighborhoods. The buses take forever because of that internal bus loop. It's just fine, in my opinion. So I wasn't quite sure what to take a selfie with because arguably the other most iconic thing about Caribbean Beach is the fact that they do have themed pirate rooms. But obviously I can't just get into a pirate room without having a stay. So, the other best thing about Caribbean Beach is the fact that it's the hub of the Skyliner. It adds a lot of value to this resort, I think, and I do think it bumped it up in terms of reasons to stay here. The fact that you can get to both Epcot and Hollywood Studios via the Skyliner is a really awesome perk. And it is the Skyliner hub, so Alan and I are going to grab a much-needed late-night coffee to spur me over the finish line, and we're taking our selfie right here at the Caribbean Beach Skyliner hub. 
to make it a little more iconic, I did get the signature toffee flight latte that you can only get at this Joffrey's. I did get it sans chocolate and sans whipped cream, so it wouldn't be so sweet. But it's actually quite nice. How's yours? It's good. Standard black coffee. Oh, a cup of coffee. Fancy. Coffees in hand, we're headed on to the Skyliner again. This time on the Pop Century Art of Animation leg. Alan, mm -hmm. what's your favorite Skyliner car? Uh, I like the one with Horace, Horse Collar and Clarabelle. Oh, that one that's leaving? Yeah. That is a good one. I enjoy the Clarabelle cow. Personally, I like riding in ones that don't have a wrap because you can see better. Oh yeah, for sure. But I like the Toy Story one the most, obviously. Let Rocket Group. Oh, that one's cute too. Right. Wee! It's very dark. Does it stress you out knowing we're over water? You know what? That, you, until you said it, I was good. Well, we are. Thanks. <laughs> so nice of you. We have arrived at the Pop Century Art of Animation Skyliner station, and we are headed to Art of Animation first. Both Pop Century and Art of Animation are considered value resorts, but they're laid out a little bit differently in terms of room style. Pop Century is classic hotel rooms, but Art of Animation has one section of classic hotel rooms, and the rest are family suites that sleep up to six. Both of them feature larger-than-life icons, similar to what we saw over at the All-Stars, mm -hmm. but they both get the added perk of having that Skyliner station for Epcot and Hollywood Studios transportation, which bumps them up in value in my personal point of view. Headed in through the Finding Nemo section at Art of Animation, there are four movies represented here, Finding Nemo, Cars, The Lion King, and The Little Mermaid. Alan, which one of those is your favorite section? The Lion King. That is the correct answer. Nailed it. I've actually stayed in all the sections, I think. Maybe not Nemo. And I really just love this resort. It's adorable. Everything here is cute and larger than life. Unfortunately, that means so is Ursula, but we can overlook that for such a charming resort. Instead of choosing one section to go into, we're headed into Animation Hall, which is the main check-in, lobby, dining, shopping area, because there are some very cool things in the lobby. You could pretty much look any, any different direction and find something cool to take a picture with in here. For example, the check-in wall ha is just a bunch of colors. It reminds me of a big box of Crayola crayons. You've also got this wall here that's full of concept art for the four films that are featured in the resort. Some of it is amazing, like this drawing of Bruce the shark, this drawing of the hyenas. Some of it's a nightmare, like that. Leading into the ink and paint shop, which is the merchandise location and landscape of flavors, which is the quick service location. You've also got this wall of different concept art. I swear I could look at concept art all day, every day. But I think the coolest fixture is this chandelier, which again has concept art from the different stories hanging on it. And if you look closely, you'll see some pieces are signed with people important to the films. Like you've got Don Hahn right here, who is the director of The Lion King. You've got Jodie Benson right there, who was the voice of Ariel. I'm gonna get dizzy doing this. I'm also not 100% sure how to take a selfie with a chandelier, but we're gonna try. Totally normal, not at all anything odd. Certainly just another moment with an influencer. Pat Carroll. Ah, yes. Noticing her favorite of her species. I Pat Carroll. She's scary, but she's there. Where? There, her autograph. Oh, look. There she is. One Pat Carroll. <laughs> Fascinating. Art of animation check. And now it's across the way to Pop Century. Mm -hmm. Crossed Hourglass Lake and we are in Pop Century. Again, another value resort, kind of that motel style we saw at the All Stars. This one, however, each of the different buildings is themed to a decade, 50s to the 90s. So you've got larger than life yo-yos and dancers in the 60s section. You've got a giant computer in the 80s and 90s section. And what we are on the quest for today is along this path, there are different fun facts from every year. And we're gonna find the ones for our birth years and see whose fun fact is cooler. 
made it to the 80s and 90s section where our signs will be. Here's mine. It's super lame. 6,000 military computers. Whatever. Wow. Yours better be lamer than that. That's cooler. <laughs> Yours is cool. Imagine being born in a lame year. <laughs> Couldn't be me. <laughs> We're enthusiastically making our way towards the Monterey Resorts. That's the vibe I'm getting. Look at her go. She's like the Energizer Bunny. Wait. What? No. No, 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 no. 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 What are you doing? I've been to so many resorts. We've been doing this. I've been doing this for 13 hours. Hey, I got you. We're going to get across I'm the finish so line. It's gonna be good. Hey, just think no about it. No one cares about the monorail resorts. Okay, that's just patently false. That is untrue. What, people like the Polynesian? Yes, they like the Polynesian. Think about this. Mary Blair at the Contemporary. Whatever. Ohana noodles. You wanna get Ohana noodles? Yeah. Okay, let's go. That's what we like to see. Can we get bread pudding too? Yes, we can get bread pudding. Let's go. It's the final countdown. We made it to the first of the three monorail resorts, Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. This one is my favorite resort. Well, I'm glad you could be here for this part of the adventure. Yeah, me too. It's time to get some nudes, some bread pudding. This is an opening day Disney resort, and much like Alan, it's a lot of people's all-time favorite. Very excited to be here, and let's go. Polynesian Village Resort is a deluxe resort, as are all the resorts on the monorail. There is a DVC section of it. It's got a lot of delightful food, including the famous Ohana, the all-you-care-to-enjoy meat stick restaurant. It's got Trader Sam's, the Tiki Bar, a beautiful view of Magic Kingdom. It's a delight, I gotta say. As much as I enjoy walking into the lobby here, I gotta say I miss the original water fountain rock work by yeah. Fred Yorger, the Imagineer. For our stop at the Polynesian, we're gonna grab a quick nosh at the Tambu Lounge, which is right next to Ohana. And it's a little known as secret that you can actually get some of the Ohana signature dishes at the Tambu Lounge. Not on the menu, it's a need to know secret menu situation. And luckily, we do know. Tambu Lounge has a variety of cocktails themed to the Polynesian. The Lapu Lapu is famous. That's the one that's actually served inside of a pineapple. Lots of rum-based drinks, as you can imagine. Kona beer, which is made in Hawaii. They also have some eats on a menu that you can take a look at. But on their secret menu, you can actually order things from Ohana, including the noodles, including the bread pudding, uh, the wings, the pot stickers. V excited right now. Is there anything more iconic at the Polynesian than Ohana bread pudding and nudes. I dare say no. Also, wanna eat this. So, I'm gonna take a selfie with the nudes, a nude selfie, if you will, <laughs> to enter into the historical documents as our Polynesian selfie. If you're unfamiliar with these dishes, this is the teriyaki noodles. They are one of the sides that come at Ohana, um, along with the wings and the pot stickers and the broccolini. And then here is the famous Ohana bread pudding. It's pineapple bread pudding with vanilla ice cream, and then it's got this delicious caramel sauce on it. Delish. They've only provided chopsticks. I don't know that I can do this, but I'm gonna try. They're so good. Slightly sweet. There's some scallions in there. The needle noodles are always perfectly cooked. Mm. Nice teriyaki nudes. When I go to Ohana, most people go for the meat. I go for these and the wings and the pot stickers. Those are my favorite things at Ohana. What's your favorite thing at Ohana? The steak. Now the piece de resistance. This Ohana bread pudding is one of, if not, I think it's probably my favorite dessert in Disney World. What they don't put in the recipe book is that there are chunks of pineapple. I'll remember that for next time. Incredibly good. The difficulty with bread pudding is oftentimes that it's way too sweet. What Ohana does well is that they separate the sweetness of the bread pudding with the actual syrup that we're putting over top of it with the caramel, and that makes it, you can just pick the right amount for you, as opposed to having it all packed in that bread pudding. I've been recharged. 
Mm -hmm. The noodles will do that. The noodles and the bread pudding have fueled me to get to two more resorts. Scooting a little fast over to the Grand Floridian, which is our next stop, because our plan is to go to Enchanted Rose, and they close fairly soon. So hurrying up, so making our way quickly over there. So we have time to grab a cocktail and take our photo and not be the annoying people that the cast members have to kick out when they want to go home at the end of their shift. Because we love cast members. We do. We love cast members. They're our favorites. They are. They're the best. We love cast members. They work really hard. They do. So here's today's Molly's Don't Be a Jerk PSA featuring Alan. And it's my favorite PSA. Be nice to cast members. Be nice to cast members. Probably whatever rule they're enforcing, they didn't make it up. Nope. They're, they don't get paid enough. But they do have to tell you about it. So, just remember that. And we're not silly enough to think things don't go wrong on your Disney vacation. Because, unfortunately, they do. But as someone's southern grandmother's probably said, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. Nailed it. So, there you go. Be nice. Hello everyone, we've made it to the Grand Floridian and for some reason I feel like I should talk like this when I come here. Maybe I'm tired or maybe that's the official accent of the Grand Floridian. No? Alright. Well, tip of the hat to all of you. We have made it into the Grand Floridian. This is Disney's fanciest, it's bougiest, it's most deluxe of all deluxe resorts, the Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. Here you will find some of the most signature dining in Walt Disney World, including Citrico's, a Mary Poppins themed signature dining restaurant, Narcoozie's, a waterside seafood signature dining restaurant, and Victorian Albert's, the fanciest restaurant in all of Walt Disney World. And we are going there right now. <laughs> Can you imagine where you're going right now? You look so good. I'm wearing leggings. I have shorts on. And a cardigan. We're not going to go. No. no. Where we are going is the Enchanted Rose. Mm -hmm. This is one of our favorite lounge. Oh gosh, I said our. Gross. This is... <laughs> Gross. This is the Beauty and the Beast themed lounge that took over Meisner's a few years ago. It's subtle Beauty and the Beast, though I'm talking like this chandelier designed to loosely remind you of Belle's dress. This is where you get a lot of signature cocktails. They also have a delightful menu, and they share a kitchen with Citrico's, so you know you're going to get some good stuff. And we're going to get some signature cocktails, because this is our second to last spot. There are several different rooms that you can choose to have your cocktails and eats in at the Enchanted Rose. There is this one, which is the library, and actually has some very cool uh, Beauty and the Beast props on that shelf you actually have lumiere um, from the live action film and on the other shelf you've got cogsworth and mrs potts you also have the rose and the mirror here on the fireplace the other rooms at the lounge include the main bar which has this beautiful light fixture again supposed to remind you of Belle's dress and i just love the detail and the ambiance in here you'll see like artwork from the film you have another room out here that is designed to remind you of the forest and then there's an outdoor patio as well so a gorgeous space one that I was personally a little nervous about because I loved Meisner so much, but I think they did an excellent job with the theme and the delicate details and the menu here. Grabbed our cocktails and to-go cups since they're about to close. I got the signature grand old fat. Nope. <laughs> I'm so used to getting old fashions that I just automatically was like, this pink drink right here. Man, would you look at that? That new is recipe. an old fashioned. No, it is the grand cosmopolitan. <laughs> I got the old fashioned. There we go. There Nailed we go. It. Wanted to mix it up. And we're going to take our selfie right here with the signature pineapple lamps. Did you know pineapples used to be a sign of wealth because it, it was far away. Hawaii and other tropical locations were very far away from all the kings and the king, queens and the monarchs in Europe. So if you had a pineapple, it mean, meant you had a lot of money because it cost a lot to get there. Nowadays, the pineapple is typically a sign for welcome and hospitality. So, considering it's at the Grand Floridian, which is expensive to say the least, and Disney's whole thing is welcoming you and hospitality, that's why there's pineapples there. Mm -hmm. So cheers to the Grand. I do love a Grand Cosmo. It's tart, it's refreshing, it's a nice cocktail. You can never go wrong with an old fashioned. And the Enchanted Rose does a great one. They do, they do. All right, let's take that selfie. Okay, question. As a former cast member, 
as a Disney World guest. Which of these things from the Full House Disney special do you think are the most unrealistic? This is this is a very uh-huh. long list. Uh huh. The fact that Michelle won Princess for the Day and they immediately had collateral and marketing for it all over the park and she got to do whatever she wanted, including be in the parade. The fact that Joey and Jesse broadcasted their radio show from the Living Seas Aquarium inside of it. Also what happened. Or, 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 Danny proposing to Vicky with fireworks in the sky that said, Vicky, will you marry me, Danny, over Cinderella Castle. In order, Mm -hmm. from least ridiculous to most ridiculous, Mm -hmm. least ridiculous is Joey and Jesse broadcasting from the Living Seas. I agree. Yeah. I could see somebody paying enough money to have that happen. Next is Michelle being princess for a day. Grand Marshals are a thing. Maybe if it was like a limited, like limited time magic thing. For me, it's not so much that she was in the parade, because you're right, Grand Marshals are a thing. And there was a campaign at one point yeah. where they pulled little girls to dress up like princesses. Yeah. For me, it's more unlikely that they're going to hang posters of a child all over, yeah, that's because that happen. ruins the experience for everybody else in yeah. the park. That wouldn't happen at all. I think the concept is sound. The execution would never happen at that scale. Sure. The most unlikely uh-huh. is the proposal scene because we are in agreement that literally would n- there's no shot there that are would ever happen. forty to fifty thousand people watching the fireworks and all two but two of them two, care about the proposal. Yeah, all but two people care about Vicky. Will you marry me in the sky? So the idea that that could happen is ridiculous. Could you imagine? Can you imagine how mad you would be? Listen, I, like you've just come from Milwaukee. Sure. Right. You're, you're on your first trip uh-huh. with your family, yeah. likely, right? And you're watching the fireworks in Cinderella Castle. Cherry on the day. Right? If you're lucky, you were there when it was that beautiful birthday cake. Well, it was the 90s. <laughs> and you see Vicky, will you marry me? Yeah, you don't give it. <laughs> anyway. When sitcoms go to Disney World, it's one of my favorite things because I just pick apart how unrealistic it would be. Remember they had to retire a costume? They did. And remember when Cory and Sean sleep on Splash Mountain? Boy. Yeah. Let me tell you something. That, the smell of that hydraulic fluid, that really lulls you to sleep. If I was going to nap on an attraction, not the one I'd pick. One more. One more. One more. Remember that one time you fell down in front of the potato heads? Nope, that didn't happen. Didn't happen. Not real. Definitely not real. Didn't happen. It happened, by the way, it's real. One more, one more, one more. It happened. One more, one more. You did it. Good dance. It definitely happened. Perfect timing. We walked out, and Monorail Green is here to take us to victory. you exit, please lower your head and watch your step. Thank you. We did it. Touchdown in the final resort, 21 of 21 Disney's Contemporary Resort. This is an opening day resort. It recently went under refurbishment, so some of the rooms are Incredibles themed now. This is the home of Chef Mickey's, most likely the most iconic character dining restaurant in all of all Disney World. This is the home of California Grill, that signature rooftop restaurant. This is the resort that looks like a toaster that the monorail goes right through. And this is the resort that is home to the famous Mary Blair mural featuring children from around the world. And I can't think of anything better than to take our final selfie with than the Mary Blair mural, specifically the infamous five-legged goat. No one knows why there's a five-legged goat. You'd have to ask Mary Blair someday, but there is, and it's a Disney fan, one of those things that Disney fans get and love. So final selfie, five-legged goat. Well, friends, we did it. I went to all 21 Walt Disney World resorts today. And I was here for part of it. Yeah, you showed up when there's a lot of food to be had. Listen, I plan my day well. That's true. I hope you had fun following along, learn something about some resorts. Let us know what your favorite Disney resort is down in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And follow us on all our socials. And until next time, friends, it has been so magical. We'll see you over real soon. Bye. Bye, everybody.